Okay, we've been talking a lot about uh, doing trig on the unit circles, so we've had uh, these special angles here that we looked at. So we know that, like, for example, cosine of pi over 6 is the x coordinate here, root 3 over 2, the sine of pi over 6 is the y coordinates, 1 half, and so on and so forth. Um, and we know that because these points are on the unit circle. And remember, if you're on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate, sine is the y coordinate, uh, and all that good stuff. And we've briefly mentioned before, what if uh, the point is not on the unit circle, then we can't do that, but what can we do? Um, well, let's talk about that now. So this is sort of going to lead into something called reference triangles. So uh, reference triangles, they're kind of related to reference angles, um, but, uh, the, which we've been talking about recently. But what's nice about reference triangles is they let you do trig um, in a more general setting. So not just on the unit circle, but you know they let you do it in uh, more generality. So um, we've had questions uh, before like, uh, let's say theta is the angle associated with uh, the point such and such, you know, such and such point that's on the unit circle. Uh, what's the cosine of theta? What's the sine of theta? Well, since the point is on the unit circle, um, cosine is just the x-coordinate, sine is just the y-coordinate. Okay, but now, what if the point is not on the unit circle? And in this video, this is what we're going we're gonna to start to talk about how to do that. And then in the next few videos, we'll do some concrete examples with this. Okay, so what we want to do now, first, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a big old unit circle here. So a big old unit circle. Um, let's put an x-axis and a y-axis on that. So x-axis y-axis. Okay, so it's a unit circle, so is, if we have a point on the unit circle for an angle theta, then we're good. Okay, we know what cosine of theta is, we know what sine of theta is, all that good stuff. But let's say we have an angle theta somewhere up here. Okay, so here's our angle theta. Vertex at the origin, initial side on the positive x-axis because it's standard position. But let's say um, this point on the x-axis, or sorry, this point on the unit circle, what if we don't know that point? What if we only know some point uh, up here? Okay, let's say we only know this point. Well, then how are we going to deal with that? Okay. So let's call this point x comma y. Okay, this will be the point we know. So we know, uh, we know x and y. Okay. So we're going to assume that we know x and we know y. So we know x uh, and y. Okay, we know x and y. Um, now this point here that intersects the unit circle, let's call this point a comma b. Okay. Now we don't know a comma b, okay? We don't know a comma b. So let's write that down. Uh, we don't know, we don't know a or b. Okay, we don't know a or b, okay? Now, um, since a comma b, whatever this point is, we don't know what it is, okay? It's on the unit circle though, so we know that cosine of theta um, is the x coordinate a, right? And sine of theta is the y coordinate b, right? But we don't know A and we don't know B, so how can we express this in terms of X and Y, okay? Well, what we want to do is start messing around with triangles. So this kind of leads into the concept of a reference triangle. So let's uh, do this thing here. Okay, so drop this perpendicular, drop this perpendicular here. So you'll notice that this is tangent to the circle, but that's just a coincidence, so forget about that, just a coincidence. Um, anyway, uh, so let's um, focus on this uh, smaller triangle here, so let's zoom into that. So since this is the origin 0, 0, this is the point a comma b, what's this length here? Uh, it's a, right? So remember, if you start at 0, 0, you have to go to the right a and then up b to get to this point. So this is b. Okay, this is a, this is b. So um, how about this larger length here? Well, uh, that larger length is going to be x, okay, because uh, let's zoom out a little bit. So if we start at 0, 0, we have to go to the right x and then up y to get to the point x comma y, okay? So that's why this larger distance is x, this larger distance here is y, uh, this distance is b, this distance is a, okay? So now, um, forget about that larger triangle, think of trig functions of theta in terms of just this triangle now. Uh, what's this hypotenuse here? The hypotenuse is 1, right, because it's the radius of the unit circle. It's the radius of the unit circle, so the hypotenuse, the length, the distance here is 1, okay? So um, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse or in other words, a over 1. So I want to write this as a over 1. Why do I want to do that? Well, we'll see why in a bit. Um, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, opposite over hypotenuse, b over 1. Okay. Well, how do I express that in terms of x and y? Well, um, we can think of that as uh, adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse, or we could use similar triangles. So I want to show you there's two different ways of thinking about this. 
So first of all, we could just say, well, hey, cosine of theta is uh, adjacent x over hypotenuse, whatever that hypotenuse is, or sine of theta is opposite y over hypotenuse, whatever the hypotenuse is. We'll talk about that soon. Um, or we could use similar triangles from geometry. Okay, so how do we use similar triangles here? Um, how do we use similar triangles? So let's, let's uh, forget about the circle here, just pull off the triangle part and let's just look at that separately. So we'll uh, look at the triangle part separately. Okay. So it didn't really keep the scale correct, but that's, that's okay, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so here, the smaller side was A, right? Here's the smaller side, A. Um, and then the larger part down here was X, so this whole thing is X. Okay. And then this uh, smaller hypotenuse is 1, so this smaller hypotenuse here is 1. Okay. And then uh, this part was B. Remember, this part here was B. Okay. So this, uh, this part right here is the same as this part right here, which is B. And then this part here, that's Y, that's the same as this part here, so this is Y. Okay. So remember, um, now what we have is a right triangle in, sitting inside of a larger right triangle. This, here's our angle theta. Okay, here's our angle theta right here. So um, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Now here it's a little more clear that cosine of theta, we can think of it as adjacent over hypotenuse for the smaller triangle or for the larger triangle, right? Or if you want to think about similar triangles, um, if you're not convinced by that, you can use similar triangles and say, well, hey, similar triangles tells me um, small side over small hypotenuse a over 1, small side over small hypotenuse equals large side over large hypotenuse equals x over, let me call that r. Okay, I'm going to call the large hypotenuse r. So the large hypotenuse, I'm going to call that guy r. Okay. So um, again, small side over small hypotenuse equals large side over large hypotenuse. Okay. So A over 1 equals X over R. So that's one way of uh, expressing one of the relationships between similar triangles. So A over 1 is X over R. So we have that over here, X over R. Similarly, um, another relationship we can express with uh, similar triangles is small side over small hypotenuse equals corresponding large side over large hypotenuse. B over 1 equals Y over R. Okay, so what we could also say is uh, B over 1 equals Y over R, okay? Well, hey, B over 1 is what we have right here, so that's the same thing as Y over R, okay? So again, you could think of that in terms of just right triangles, so here's our theta. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse with the small triangle or the large triangle. If you're not convinced by that for whatever reason, just think of similar triangles from geometry, okay? So small side over small hypotenuse equals large side over large hypotenuse. Small side over small hypotenuse equals large side over large hypotenuse. And that's where this comes from here. Okay, well, what is R, though? How do we get R? We know X and Y. How do we get R? Well, remember, it's just a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so remember, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that uh, R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Okay, so we can just take a square root of both sides. Okay, so then R equals uh, the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Okay, and yes, technically, when you take a square root of something squared, you have a positive and a negative root, right? Um, but since R is technically measuring a distance here, um, we do want to keep it positive, so we'll just keep it positive just to keep things uh, accurate, technical, and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, this right here, this larger triangle, that's an example of what's called a reference triangle, and we'll do more concrete examples with actual numbers, not just X's and Y's and all that, in the next video, uh, starting in the next video. So why do we do this? Again, because we want to know cosine of theta and sine of theta, and all we know is x and y. We don't know a or b. If we knew a or b, we could say, oh, hey, cosine of theta is a, sine of theta is b, but we don't know those. We only know x and y. So that's why we went through this process here, just to show, uh, just so that we can show that, okay, well, that's the same thing as x over r. That's uh, cosine of theta is x over r, sine of theta is y over r, okay, where r is the hypotenuse of this larger triangle here. Okay, so let's uh, label that up here, too. Okay, so R is the hypotenuse of the large triangle. And again, how do we get R? It's the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So let's write that here. So R equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Now notice I want to point out that um, this general formula actually still works on the unit circle, right? Just that on the unit circle, R actually is 1. Okay, R is the hypotenuse here. It's 1, okay? Um, so this, you could just remember this general formula, but um, you don't really have, there's not much to memorize here, it's just something to kind of know how to work with. So with reference triangles, 
um, there are a few different ways that the questions that uh, that questions can be asked um, that use reference triangles. So, um, or another way of saying that, let's phrase that differently. Um, questions that allow you to use reference triangles, they can be phrased a few different ways. So we'll see some various examples in the upcoming videos. But anyway, just uh, remember that if you have a point off of the unit circle that you're dealing with, or um, it could be expressed in a completely different way that might not seem obvious like that, um, but if you're dealing with points off of the unit circle, you want to use reference triangles like this. Okay? And we'll start doing concrete examples in the next few videos. So anyway, this is just an introduction to reference triangles. We'll talk more about them and how to use them uh, in the upcoming videos.